Could the next generation of Samsung's flagship phones set a new standard in mobile performance? With the Galaxy S25 series on the horizon, whispers of cutting-edge advancements are stirring excitement in the tech world. Among the most intriguing rumors is the potential use of Samsung's improved LPDDR5X memory chips, which could redefine the user experience. Historically, Samsung has relied on its own in-house RAM and storage chips for its devices. However, reports indicate a shift in strategy for the upcoming Galaxy S25, at least in its initial production phase. While many units are expected to feature DRAM chips from other manufacturers, a select few may come equipped with Samsung's enhanced in-house memory technology. The talk of the town is Samsung's LPDDR5X DRAM chips, which some Galaxy S25 units are rumored to incorporate. Unlike their predecessors, these chips are reportedly fabricated on a more advanced 12 nanometer process node compared to the 13 nanometer process used in the Galaxy S24 series. This evolution is not just about smaller transistors. It signifies a leap in power efficiency and space optimization, potentially offering users a more seamless and energy efficient experience. Transitioning to the 12 nanometer process was not without its challenges. Initial reports pointed to production hiccups that slowed down the mass production schedule. Yet, Samsung appears to have ironed out these issues, ramping up production to ensure a steady supply. This move could see Samsung reclaiming a larger share of the DRAM chip market, surpassing competitors like Micron in later production batches. Complementing these memory advancements, the Galaxy S25 series is poised to feature Qualcomm's latest, latest Snapdragon 8 Elite chip across all models. Originally, Samsung had plans to integrate the Exynos 2500 chip into certain models of the Galaxy S25 and S25 Plus. However, due to lower production yields, the company has decided to rely on Qualcomm for consistent performance across the board. When it comes to memory and storage, the Galaxy S25 and S25 Plus models are rumored to boast 12 gigabytes of RAM across all storage variants. The Ultra variant is expected to elevate the stakes with 12 gigabytes of RAM in its 256 gigabyte version and an impressive 16 gigabytes of RAM for its 512 gigabyte and one terabyte variants. All models are likely to come equipped with universal flash storage 4.0, promising faster data transfer rates and improved overall performance. As we anticipate the official unveiling of the Galaxy S25, one thing is clear. Samsung is not just making incremental improvements. The integration of enhanced LPDDR5X memory chips, a more refined production process, and robust internal components suggest that the Galaxy S25 could be a game changer in the smartphone arena. Samsung is once again set to revolutionize the mid-range smartphone market with the introduction of the Galaxy A36 and Galaxy A56. These upcoming devices promise not just a refresh in design and internal components, but also a significant upgrade in charging technology, something that has been eagerly anticipated by users around the globe. The Galaxy A36 and A56 are poised to offer 45 watt fast charging, a feature that will undoubtedly enhance user experience by drastically reducing charging times. Certified by TUV Rhineland, both phones will support charging at 10 volts and 4.5 amperes, culminating in the impressive 45 watt charging capability. This enhancement means users will spend less time tethered to an outlet and more time enjoying their devices. This is not Samsung's first foray into equipping mid-range smartphones with such fast charging speeds. Previous models in the Galaxy C, F, and M series have featured 45 watt charging, but were largely restricted to select markets in Asia and Latin America. The global release of the Galaxy A36 and A56, however, marks a significant step in making this high-speed charging technology accessible to a wider audience, potentially changing the way users interact with mid-range smartphones. In terms of design, the Galaxy A36 and A56 share a similar aesthetic, characterized by a large Super AMOLED display that offers vibrant colors and deep blacks. The key island design, located on the right side, adds a distinctive touch, while the vertically aligned triple camera setup on the rear provides a sleek and modern look. While the Galaxy A36 has slightly thicker bezels compared to the A50 sticks, both models maintain a sleek profile that feels premium in hand. Out of the box, these phones will run on Android 15 with Samsung's One UI 7, providing a smooth and user-friendly interface. 
Samsung has built a solid reputation for supporting its devices with timely updates, and the Galaxy A30 Sticks and A50 Sticks are no exceptions. Users can expect up to six major Android OS updates, ensuring that their phones remain up to date with the latest features and security enhancements for years to come. When it comes to performance, the Galaxy A36 is equipped with the Snapdragon 6 Gen 3 processor, paired with a minimum of 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. This combination promises a fluid user experience capable of handling everyday tasks with ease. The Galaxy A56, on the other hand, takes it up a notch with a more powerful Exynos 1580 processor. Both chips feature octa-core CPUs with four high-performance cores, but the Exynos 1580 offers superior performance in both processing power and graphics capabilities, making it an excellent choice for more demanding applications in gaming. Photography enthusiasts will appreciate the camera setup on both devices. Each phone is equipped with a 50-megapixel primary rear camera designed to capture detailed and vibrant images. A 12-megapixel front-facing camera ensures that selfies are sharp and well-lit, perfect for social media sharing. Rumors about Samsung potentially removing Bluetooth connectivity from the S Pen in the upcoming Galaxy S25 Ultra have stirred up a mix of reactions. Introduced with the Galaxy Note 9, the Bluetooth-enabled S Pen allow users to perform tasks like controlling apps remotely through Air Actions. For those who embrace these features, a change may seem like a step backward. Yet many Galaxy S Ultra users might not even notice the difference, raising questions about the true impact of this decision. Air Actions, for instance, enable remote gestures for controlling select apps, making the S Pen a unique tool for tasks, like presenting slideshows or snapping photos from a distance. However, if all these features sound impressive on paper, their real-world utility often left much to be desired. After switching from a Galaxy Note 10 to a Galaxy S22 Plus and experimenting with the Galaxy Tab S7 FE's S Pen, I rarely found these advanced features indispensable in my daily life. The excitement surrounding the S Pen's Bluetooth features often faded once users faced the practical limitations. Compatibility issues with apps and the limited scope of Air Actions reduced the appeal. What initially seemed like a groundbreaking innovation eventually felt more like a gimmick that failed to integrate seamlessly into everyday usage. This disconnection between potential and execution may explain why some users won't miss the removal of Bluetooth features. However, it's essential to acknowledge that not everyone shares this perspective. For those who utilize the S Pen's camera clicker functionality, the removal of Bluetooth could be a significant loss. This feature, which allowed users to capture photos remotely, proved to be one of the more practical and widely appreciated uses of the S Pen. Its simplicity and reliability made it a favorite among users who value convenience in photography. Another layer to this discussion involves the potential removal of the S Pen's gyro and accelerometer sensors. These sensors, essential for transmitting motion data, enhance the S Pen's capabilities, making it competitive with tools like Apple's Pencil Pro. If Samsung does not introduce an alternative technology like Ultra Wideband, UBLUB, to replace Bluetooth, the S Pen's ability to serve as a sophisticated drawing and writing tool could be significantly diminished. The public perception of such a change could also pose challenges for Samsung. If the rumors are accurate, removing these Bluetooth features might lead to negative publicity. Even those who do not regularly use the S Pen might view this as a regression, providing critics with another reason to question Samsung's innovation compared to its competitors, particularly Apple. To spike these concerns, there is a potential silver lining by shifting focus to the S Pen's core strengths, such as its use for drawing and writing. Samsung could revitalize its appeal. Emphasizing these foundational features might resonate with users who prioritize simplicity and reliability over more complex, less practical functionalities. A refined focus on these core aspects could position the S Pen as a more versatile tool, appealing to both creative professionals and everyday users. While the rumors suggest a potential scaling back of the S Pen's features, it's worth considering that Samsung might have a strategic plan in place 